go live. Uh, my understanding is Lindsay Antwine is our, our, our first person to be, yep, there is. This is giving me anxiety. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm sorry that I don't have a stable hand holding the, the camera here. It's because I don't have my tripod with me and I'm filling in for, I don't know how many other people were scheduled to put on this show for you. Uh, and I was not going to even watch it. <laughs> I was going to be doing something else, but I'm glad to be here for you uh, at our usual 4.30 time on a Monday. Uh, and I see Lindsay Antoine is here. I know Deborah Ronker had put a message earlier, although uh, I, I don't know if she's necessarily here yet. And uh, because I am not as knowledgeable about uh, the home oxygen treatments for COVID, which is what we were going to cover with Dr. Um, Walker, the pulmonologist, we may not go over that. Lindsay Antoine, I see that you are thankful that we are here. So good. We're glad, glad to be here for you. Uh, hopefully be able to answer some questions and get some good medical information out there for the world. And I, again, apologize for the uh, unstable, shaky camera work as I'm holding this. I don't have something to hold. I don't my tripod at home. But uh, I, I hope that the, the view is pleasing. I, I don't mean my, my face with all of the uh, zinc oxide. <laughs> oh, there's Debbie. I, I thought you would be here. Zinc oxide to try to keep from... Um, Anyway, especially fair skin. Um, I try to say that in a nice way. Oh, and also we have uh, Kinley, Kinley or Kinley Wade. Hi, glad to have you also joining the, the live stream and on the chat on this uh, medical live stream. Uh, of course, the big medical topic in most places is COVID and most parts of the United States are very affected by it. Thankfully, both nationally and in Placer County, uh, the numbers of new infections are finally finally reached a peak and gone past the peak. Hospitalizations also seem to finally have reached a plateau and just be on the on the other side of a peak going down. But still, that's an awful lot of patients. And then ICU visits also uh, just looks like it's just right where it's going to start going down in, in uh, following the number of total infections having gone down. And we expect to see that go down even more here in the coming weeks. Uh, very much looking forward to that happening uh, so that we can finally reach a place where there's not so much of an impaction of uh, ICU beds, which has been a problem in a lot of places. Thankfully, not as much in places where I've been uh, as some places like Texas, for example, where they've been in Florida, where they've really been hit hard. Uh, and hopefully they'll start to see some relief here coming up soon. Okay, VM says, once you get monoclonals, and if you get COVID again, can you get monoclonals again? Interesting thing about monoclonals. So he's referring to the monoclonal antibodies. These are the uh, treatment that is given for COVID-19. In fact, it can even be given to especially sensitive people um, when they've just had a contact, a known contact to COVID. They can go into certain places. In, in our town, it's the emergency department rather than the infusion center, and get an injection of these monoclonal antibodies that have been found to, if given early, decrease or even prevent uh, a presentation of COVID-19 or, or prevent hospitalization in somebody who otherwise would. So that's a very good thing. Um, they, they aren't expected to do much for people who have uh, normal immunity and are under age 65 or under age 50. Um, it's hard for me to say age 50 anymore <laughs> as, as the age uh, cut off for people being more vulnerable to disease. But certainly uh, people who are more vulnerable can get these monoclonal antibodies. And his question was if, if they would stick around. So that's the problem with monoclonal antibodies. I don't mean to say bad things about them. Uh, it's, it's great when they help uh, for those people who are especially vulnerable. But their, their benefit is short-lived. They're not natural antibodies. They're not your antibodies that you made natively like would be from a vaccine. The vaccine teaches your body to make antibodies. The vaccine teaches your body to make antibodies and it continues to have that in their library uh, so that they can recall those antibodies on future exposure to a virus. And the monoclonal antibodies, uh, once, once they're gone, they're gone. So they'll, they'll last in your system for a few weeks, to maybe months. Uh, but then after that, you, you don't have the protection from the monoclonal antibodies. Now, somebody who's been uh, natively infected uh, with COVID-19, they would continue to have immunity. And people who have had a vaccine, they would continue to have the antibodies that their body made. So Deborah Ronker says, uh, or is asking if you get both vaccinations. Oops. Sorry, Deborah. I, uh, I 
tried to uh, read your question and I knocked everything off. Deborah asks, if you get both vaccinations, what are the chances of still getting COVID? Much, much, much lower than if you didn't. Uh, in fact, still pretty good. Now, Deborah, I know a little bit about your health situation and I'm making an assumption on your age and I probably shouldn't do that with a lady. Apologize. Um, I'll say that because I know you're a retired nurse, not a working nurse. That's, that's where that'll come from. Uh, you would probably... Uh, be expected to possibly benefit from a, a third shot or a booster if you got if you got the Pfizer vaccine. Uh, we don't have those boosters uh, available yet for Moderna, and in fact, I don't know if they've actually officially announced the way that people go and get their their third shot or their booster. If you've had Pfizer, uh, I believe it'll just simply be a matter of showing up at the pharmacy because uh, the pharmacies carry the the vaccines. Uh, possibly, you would need a note from your doctor saying, "Yes, this is a person who is." who has one of these conditions. But if you're over age 65, you, you don't even need a note because you're over 65. And that's the only criteria you need for getting that, that third shot. And uh, you can look at vaccines.gov. That's vaccines, plural with an S at the end. Vaccines.gov. And you can put in your uh, zip code. And then it asks you if you want to search, you know, a one mile radius, five mile radius, ten mile radius, something like that. And you'll find all the pharmacies. And you can even specify which vaccine. So somebody who wants to get that, that third shot or the booster, they would, of course, say co uh, Pfizer. And then they'd find all of the, uh, well, not just pharmacies, but all the places where you can get the shot. Uh, even if it's not a pharmacy, you can still get the shot there. I, I believe that's a condition with most places for getting vaccines is that they'll give it to anybody who comes around. Um, not necessarily, though, but most places. VM uh, writes, the stream cut out during your answer. <laughs> can you tell me? If you like them, uh, certainly. If I was a, a person that was very vulnerable to infection, I would I would want to get them. Uh, even if I was just exposed and had not been vaccinated, I would go to an emergency department and say, "Hey, I'm a vulnerable person uh, to COVID-19, and I, I was exposed. Please give me the monoclonal antibodies." Um, but really, the, the the superior protection is to be vaccinated, and and then you probably would not get much benefit from the monoclonal antibodies. If you had been vaccinated, that's really who they're intended for is people who have not yet been vaccinated and are especially vulnerable to COVID-19. It's not just for anybody. Um, and in most places, it requires a visit to an emergency department. There may be some places where they actually have the vaccine available without having to go through an emergency department to get it. Um, but in my, my town, uh, you, you would have to go to the emergency department. So I encourage people to go ahead anyway and call their primary care physician to see if they have another place for them to get it uh, without, you know, I'm going to go to a very busy emergency department that has a lot of uh, a lot of customers coming through. Uh, you know, to put in business terms. Uh, even though they don't want to have a lot of people coming through, it's because people are sick if they are, and and uh, they have to be taking care of those people with some of them who they have a hard time finding ICU beds for. Thankfully, that's improving though. We talked about that a little bit earlier. So, VM, I hope that uh, addresses your question about monoclonal antibodies. Um, and if if that part of the broadcast, the live stream, cut out for you. What I also said was that uh, they, they are inferior to vaccines because with vaccines, your body learns to make its own antibodies. With natural infection, your body learns to make its own antibodies, whereas with monoclonal antibodies, they're already made. Your body doesn't learn anything. It just uses the, the uh, monoclonal antibodies, and after a number of weeks, they're, you don't have them in circulation anymore, so uh, your protection is gone from those. You have to keep getting the shots every so many weeks, and, and I'm sorry, I, I can't tell you exactly. I think it's more on the more on the scale of like uh, six to eight weeks. It, I was to guess um, how long you expect to have efficacy from those. It may even be shorter, uh, quite possibly. Any other questions or comments out there? I, I do know that some people probably heard about uh, our our president not having um, selected a commissioner for the FDA, even though it's well into. The, the new presidential term, and that's a, quite uh, an item in the news uh, that we've been hearing about, and I don't know anything more than that on it. Um, I also don't know why my screen just went blank, but there we go. I'm back. And I see that VM, let's see if I can pull up the, the chat here. Yes, thanks. Okay, so I did answer your question. Very good. Glad to do that. And through. There we go. It looks like uh, this uh, not pre-planned Internet connection is, is not reliable, so I'm going to have to sign off here. But thank you so much for another weekly show of Auburn Milk Group, a live stream that is not just the job of the people on, but also those who bring their questions and comments about medical topics. We're glad that you're a part of it. 
Lindsay, thank you so much for what you contribute to the channel. Uh, you are one of our, uh, or, or the main person on Patreon. And of course, we recommend that if people want to be a part of the channel, they can by going to Patreon. We also encourage people to be members of the channel. But of course, uh, you get a lot more for your money by going to Patreon. Uh, and of course, uh, usually I would play a little outro here that has the names of certain contributors on Patreon and uh, channel members. Sorry, I don't have that this week, but uh, normally we would show uh, some appreciation to those who are members of the channel and on Patreon. Until next time, Dr. Mark Fontel and all of you, stay in good health.